Welcome, welcome one and all to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The big story... The big story tonight, if, if you're joining us uh, from your local news, is the weather in Southern California. They have some, and it is the bad kind. They're currently being hit with an epic storm that is expected to bring a month's worth of rainfall in a day. And it's what the National Weather Service is calling one of the most dramatic weather days in recent memory. But surely not the last. These bizarre weather emergencies are just going to keep happening. We all know the cause. Al Gore warned us about this, and it's getting worse every year, so I'll just say it. The witch's curse. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see her cat when I backed out of my garage. The footage from the rain apocalypse is pretty startling, like this of the Santa Barbara Botanical Gardens, which I'm told normally does not have a waterfall. <laughs> and these flooded streets outside a wet suit sale. <laughs> Yesterday, those were just suits. <laughs> now, meteorologists say the drastic weather is being caused by something called an atmospheric river, which is also the name of my easy listening dad band. <laughs> Now stay strong and stay dry, California, because there is some good weather news in the forecast. Thanks to meteorological groundhog Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil. Seen here realizing his handler's beard is made from last year's Phil. <laughs> now, this was Friday. Friday was Groundhog's Day, and our buddy Phil did not see his shadow, which means an early spring is on the way. Or, or... I know, exciting, huh? or not, because on average, Phil has gotten it right 30% of the time <laughs> over the past 10 years, which means he's way less reliable than the prognosticating raccoon, coin flip Chet. <laughs> got... Raccoons have thumbs. That's why they can yeah, do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Can't get a groundhog to do that. As usual, Phil, the psychic rat, made his prediction in the small Pennsylvania town of Gobbler's Knob. Located between the sleepy villages of Reach Around Falls and <laughs> Slurpler's Grundle. <laughs> is Gobbler's Knob, wait a second. Gobbler's Knob isn't the name of the town, right? It's Punxsutawney is the name of the town. Right. Gobbler's Knob is the hill they go to where Phil lives. I'm so sorry. We will issue an apology <laughs> if we ever feel sorry about it. Now, <laughs> Well, Friday was, of course, Groundhog's biggest day. Yesterday was music's biggest night because it was the 66th annual Grammy Awards. <laughs> yeah, y'all watch. Big... Taylor Swift won her fourth album of the year Grammy. Yeah, big night. And, and she used the occasion to make this surprise announcement. I want to say thank you to the fans by telling you a secret that I've been keeping from you for the last two years. Which is that my brand new album comes out April 19th. It's called... <laughs> it's called The Tortured Poets Department. Yay, new Tay-Tay! <laughs> yay, new Tay-Tay! Tay-Tay, new yay! Coincidentally, <laughs> a Tortured Poets Department also a rejected title for the movie Dead Poet Society, <laughs> along with Bad School, Good Teacher, and Those Rich Boys Sure Are Sad. <laughs> now, uh, on Saturday, just this past Saturday, voters went to the polls in my home state of South Carolina for the first official Democratic primary, and President Joe Biden took 96% of the votes. 96.2. 96.2% of the votes. Now, that is very close to 100, which is also Joe's new campaign slogan. Oh, God. All right, just got it. Sure. So, in his victory speech, Biden showed his gratitude to the people of the Palmetto State. It's good to be home. You know what's really good about it, Kamala? These people know me, and they're still here. These are the folks, as that saying goes up in Klamath, who brung me to the dance. Yes, South Carolina brung Biden to the dance. <laughs> then they said, actually, you know what? Let's wait for a slow one. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if those knees can handle the electric slide. <laughs> Biden also reminisced about the first time he ran for the Senate 
and he got a little distracted. I remember my sister uh, coming home when we were starting to run for the Senate and said, I think you need some help. <laughs> this is back in 1990. No, I'm only joking. Hey, John, how are you? 1972. Oh, God. Oh, Joe. But it does remind me of that Prince song. Cause tonight we're gonna party like it's 1990. I'm only joking. Hey, John, how are you? 1972. We also got a glimpse of what Biden is like behind the scenes. Uh, because according to reports, uh, Biden recently said of Donald Trump, what a ass the guy is. <laughs> now, now the image you have. A little rough with Joe. Now, that sounds rough, but it's actually just a new question on the presidential cognitive exam. <laughs> <laughs> Biden has also described Trump as someone who delights in others' misfortunes, calling him a sick <laughs> To which Trump objected, I'm not sick. Doctors are always coming up to me. These doctors, big doctors, tears in their eyes, big guys, strong doctors. Doctors who never cry. I'm talking lumberjack football playing doctors. And they say, sir, sir, you're the healthiest I've ever seen. <laughs> now, little penicillin cleans up the old... Old sick. Of course, Biden's not the first president to work blue. I mean, those of us of a certain age all remember when Ronald Reagan said this. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down these nuts. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> you okay? It's Lampley. It's Lampley, all right? If you don't show up to rehearsal, then this is gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's staying focused on his core message, him. This weekend, he posted this message on social media. For so many years, people have been saying that Elvis and I look alike. Now, this pic has been going all over the place. What do you think? Along with this picture. <laughs> look, I don't care for the guy. You know that. But I do think Donald Trump does look like Elvis if you dug up Elvis now. <laughs> you know? They have a lot in common. Yeah. Look. They have a lot in common. In Trump's high school yearbook, he was voted most likely to die on the toilet. <laughs> you know that's how the king went, right? Okay. Yesterday, Trump sat down with Maria Bartiromo of the Fox News, and she gave him a chance to walk back his I want to be a dictator comments, and he did kind of. It was with Sean Hannity, and we were having fun. And I said, I'm going to be a dictator. Because he asked me, are you really going to be a dictator? I said, absolutely. I'm going to be a dictator for one day. That was said in jest. See, everybody settle down. He's just kidding about being a dictator, just like Hitler's famous memoir, Mind Jest. <laughs> then... Then Bartiromo asked Trump about some unlikely states he hopes to win. Are you going to be able to flip blue states like a New York and a New Jersey? There's a I rumor you're going so. to do a rally in the South Bronx. I think so, yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> there is no way on earth. No, 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 no. 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 Trump, Trump is not flipping those states, although I can think of one thing voters from New York and New Jersey would be willing to flip him. Oh, here's a little story that caught my eye. Everything has changed forever and we can never go back. Because over the weekend, Apple released their augmented reality headset, the Apple Vision Pro, a breakthrough that will bring humanity to an unprecedented plane of digital omniscience for everyone who has $3,500 to blow on Wi-Fi ski goggles. <laughs> now, when, when it was released, people lined up to be the very first ones to never see their families again. <laughs> And what sets these goggles apart is that they allow you to see the world around you as well as their digital content that they provide. So many people decided to bring their headset out into the world. In, in one viral video, a New Yorker appeared to be using it on his subway commute 
You know what? Good for him. I always personally appreciate it when a man on the subway has the courtesy to watch invisible porn. <laughs> the the engoggled, the engoggled were also seen in their natural habitat on the face of the driver of a Tesla Cybertruck. I assume the driver is using augmented reality to pretend that they're driving a much less embarrassing car. <laughs> and last summer, uh, and then I would test drive what they gave me. Last summer, uh, and this is true, uh, I got to play with uh, these, these, these goggles, this, uh, this uh, Apple Vision Pro, for about 45 minutes uh, because I'm special. And my first reaction after I took them off, and I said this to the person in the room showing me uh, the goggles, I said, you sons of bitches, you did it again. Because mm -hmm. they have figured something out here that made the experience so wonderful that I'm sure at some point we're all gonna regret that they did. But in the meantime, and I'm not here to do an ad for Apple, but if I do not get one, I will die. <laughs> and I'm sure they're thinking, hey, you're rich, go buy one. I can't buy one because my wife, Evie, still pays all our bills. <laughs> and she would not be thrilled to find that I spent $3,500 to be in the same room with her, but not be in the same room with her. <laughs> she wouldn't appreciate that. Now, here's the thing. I thought, <laughs> she's out of town now. I could, I could just, <laughs> I thought they would send me a free one, but they did not send me a free one. No big deal, because you know what? I got my own high-tech goggles. They're made of a space-age uh, polymer, and they augment all of reality. Oh. See, blurry, hey, <laughs> crisp. <laughs> and the sound is amazing. It's like the band is right there. But if you're skeptical about this face-based computing device, then check out this reporter's review of the headset's killer app. The absolute best thing, so I see the timer here, and now I can move it over the pasta. And now I have a second timer for six minutes that I'm putting over the mushrooms. This is just the coolest. Jab a tube in my spine and toss me in a goo pod. I want to cook in the Matrix. <laughs> How else could you possibly set a timer for your pasta? Use the one on your oven? Well, then you have to buy a second oven just to have a timer for your sauce. <laughs> We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Senator Elizabeth Warren, but when we come back, meanwhile, join us on.